So back to that conversation this morning. Remember the theme Leadership Forum and we are zeroing in on one of the facets of leadership that is authentic leadership. And we have actually described what exactly that is. And uh, people say it means different things, but some say authentic leaders are self-aware and genuine. Others say authentic leaders are uh, self-actualized individuals who are aware of their strengths, their limitations, and the emotions are the say they also show their real selves to their followers they do not act one way in private and another in public they don't hide their mistakes or weaknesses out of fear of looking weak they also realize that being self-actualized is actually an endless journey never complete so the question this morning to you is going by those attributes do you know anyone in kenya right now a leader or otherwise who actually adorns these qualities please share your views remember at gladys underscore gashanja that's on twitter at mtv kenya on facebook that's am live the hashtag on twitter is hashtag am live ntv and of course you can use our sms portal which is absolutely free 20686 and of course to help me have this conversation conversation this morning mary mukindia executive leadership coach and ceo of cdi africa good morning, good morning. and uh, next to her professor david ngaroya director of pld in theological studies international leadership university thank you for making time and uh, Thomas Mundia, Director Executive Coaching Strathmore Business School, Karibu Sana. And uh, last but not least, Dr. Oliver Kisaka, who is the MD Corat uh, Africa, which is an organization that builds the capacities of church leaders. Thank you for your time. Now, just maybe a one minute uh, now that we're coming off um, a funeral that many were looking forward to, but very sad to have been having one of a man who has been described as a statesman, one that lived all his life to ensure sure there was peace in the world and especially in Africa where he came from and understood the challenges that they had. Mary, would you describe Kofi Annan as an authentic leader? Actually, it's strange because I was thinking of that as you were, you know, giving the prep up and I was thinking, actually, who do I know? The question you give the viewers, who do I really know who's an authentic leader? And he had a question mark. Mm -hmm. And I would say yes. I mean, for me, starting with the word authentic. Authentic is something that's, you know, real, something that's not false, something that is not copied, something that's genuine, something that's real. And I would say that he is. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at, you know, authentic, where that word really c comes from, it comes from the ancient Greek, and they really pursued, you know, five things. Prudence, wisdom, temperaments, justice, and fortitude. Mm -hmm. Where prudence was, you know, fair-mindedness. <coughs> I think, yes, he was fair-minded, wisdom, seeing all possible causes of action. And I think as a diplomat for most of his life, he had to see all different causes of action and come to some point and say, this is the wisdom of having looked at the two. Temperament is being emotionally balanced. You know, you're not overwrought. You're in control of yourself. He was always in control. He looked so majestic and so, you know, regal about it. Justice is being dealing fairly with others. I think he was seen as a fair person. Mm -hmm. And lastly, fortitude is having the courage to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I did know him personally, but from everything I read about him, I would say that he was rooted in these core virtues that the Greeks then base the issues of authenticism from. So yes. Okay. All right. Now, Professor Angaruya, I mean, this is a man we experienced during the 2007-2008 post-election violence. He was instrumental in helping us mend, so to speak. What do you think about this man? Was he the authentic leader we're talking about? <clears throat> well, I would say he was an authentic uh, leader, but I don't think I would say he was the authentic leader. Mm. Um, there are two components of authentic uh, leadership, I think, which he really epitomized well. Uh, one was the issue of really balanced processing, uh, where you're able to look at people, you're able to look at issues, and listen to the two sides mm. very clearly. Um, and so he could see everybody's point of view. And in a sense, he was able to synthesize that and uh, come up with a perspective that made enemies to be friends. Um, and that is one, um, uh, one aspect that he did well. The other aspect I, I would say that he scored highly is on um, uh, relationships. Uh, you know, again, this was uh, a relational man. You know, so many leaders are able to accomplish wonderful things by doing them. 
which is good. But in the process, they can lose relationships. But Kofi Annan could get the job done and still retain the relationships. Mm. Um, I think on those two, I would say he was an authentic leader, mm -hmm. uh, but there are more scores to an, uh, an authentic leader than that. Yeah. Uh, but um, I, I'm, I'm proud <coughs> that we had such an African. Mm. He, as you mentioned at the beginning, this was a man on a journey of authentic leadership. Okay. And I think he finished well. All right. Now, Thomas Mundia, he has also come under some criticism. There's some who said he did not tick the boxes. On your part, do you think he had flaws? I, I think it would be unrealistic to say that a person doesn't have flaws. Mm. I, I think we need to be honest. And I think I echo what my friend has said. We all have our pluses and our, and our negatives. And, and I think for me what sticks out most importantly about leadership is the ability to, to take risks. And, and at times the very fact that a leader has to put their head forward means they have to be open to criticism. Mm -hmm. And, and that comes with the docket of being a leader. Uh, one has to be willing to the fact that not everyone will receive you the same way. And therefore you're open to, to find uh, things not interpreted differently. And so you'll build enemies and you'll build friends and, and people's perceptives can be different. Mm. And I think I'd, I'd like to also just add one thing that I, I think I want to echo what Professor Ngarui has mentioned that attracted me to, to Kofi Annan. And of course, first condolences to his family, mm. <coughs> to the loss for Africa. We have lost mm. a, a, an amazing person. But there's something that we need to always keep remembering when we talk about leadership is the fact that um, many times we ascribe leadership to people who are loud, uh, who are in your face, who are most talkative. But Kofi Annan had a very interesting demeanor, very introverted. But an ability to influence with that kind of character, and I think that's what authenticity is about, is really bringing out who you are mm -hmm. in your natural self and being able to influence with those abilities and talents you have. Okay, Dr. Kisaka, I mean, this man has been described as uh, an advocate for humanity and world peace. Every corner of the world, <coughs> excuse me, experienced him differently, but they all spoke <coughs> of him in the same way. Is he an authentic leader to you? Yes, uh, Gladys, yes, and, and I really wish to uh, as well pass my condolence to his family and uh, to us as Africa yeah, because he became a statesman for all of us. I had the privilege of meeting Kofi Annan um, when we were doing the post-election violence situation. Mm. <coughs> Leaders demonstrate their leadership in situations of crisis you begin to know what they are made of. This is a man who, in the context of Kenya's very serious situation, was able to actually bring parties together, negotiate, listen to many parties. Kofi Annan would be meeting 20, 30 groups in a day, one after the other, all of them with different proposals or, or similar proposals about what ought to be done about the Kenyan situation. And he would be cool, he would manage the situation, he would harvest what was positive, and he would then bring this to the table for the negotiating team. And, and to me, I think that's one of the things that really stands out, mm -hmm. that, that this man was an authentic uh, leader. And I think leaders have this capacity of creating vision um, vision is that that status that doesn't exist now that could exist if people worked towards mm. which a leader has capacity to paint and therefore redirect the energies and the thoughts of the people uh, towards that vision. I would say one quality about Kibaki that, that I would describe as authentic leadership. Well, can we save that for your <laughs> <Okay>. presentation? <laughs> <I just wanted. laughs> All right, we were just touching on uh, the late Kofi Annan, and I think at this point we can start off with just uh, giving you an, an opportunity to give us an idea of who you think maybe in the local setting is an authentic leader, but also just a crossbow, just tell us what an authentic leader is about, what should be expected of them, because some would say as somebody who's beyond reproach, but of course I also stated something things that uh, come with what an authentic leader is expected to be and to start us off of course ladies first we'll start <laughs> with uh, Mary 
uh, with Mary Mukinde and even as she makes her way to oh. the podium. Um, just remember, uh, lady and gentlemen, that you will have five minutes to make your case and uh, I will have you on a timer and when you're about halfway done, I will lift the yellow card and uh, when we, it's time to wind up, the red card will be on you and when you defy i shall ring the bell and if you defy father i might just come and get you all, <laughs> all right so <laughs> that's uh, the rules of engagement but again let's start off with mary mukinde executive leadership coach and ceo of cdi africa who is an authentic leader and do we even have that leader in kenya I'm asked to really think of somebody who's an authentic leader, because I'd always say I am. I think we're having a problem with the microphone, but even as we uh, work on that again, just to remind you our conversation on the leadership forum this morning an authentic leader described differently by different people we've touched on the kind of man the late Kofi Annan was and he actually was a man who can be called authentic and we would also like to hear your views who do you think in Kenya is actually an authentic leader again Twitter at Gladys underscore Gashanja at NTV Kenya hashtag AM live NTV and of course that is a mess to zero six eight six i think we are now ready for you mary uh, thank you very much i was just saying that i i am stumped when i try to think of um authentic leaders because what we see often and what we read is is so disturbing and there's something uppermost on my mind is the recent fracas at the nairobi city hall or the county offices and the ousting of the speaker, for whatever reasons, right or, or wrong. Those kind of things really eat deeply into ourselves or what we see, what happened to the young lady, Sharon. So I was very stumped looking at it. And the only people I can really think of are from my own professional life, one of my mentors, um, who's George Minor, as a former CEO of Kenya Shell. He's now, I think, the chairman of BAT and also on a number of boards. My own pastor, Gary uh, Karethi. It's really, it's sad that at this age I have to say that. Because for me, authentic leadership, and just looking at, you know, based on what I said about the, base, the five core virtues of prudence, wisdom, temperance, justice, and fortitude, the four qualities for me that I was reading up and seeing that, and I was relating to, that an authentic leader has, and is what some of my colleagues are saying, first is self-awareness. It's really knowing yourself, so that you're genuine in knowing yourself. You know, having being transparent and being genuine, um, being fair-minded in that you, you, you balance what we were talking about, Kofi Annan being able to balance, today Saka was saying balancing, all these different views and then ending up being fair-minded. And then having a kind of an internalized moral compass or, um, you know, being able to do the, you know, the right thing. And all these things are things that need courage. They need for you to dwell delve into yourself and be really aware of who you are. And we see that in probably our own personal spheres, but we don't see it in public life. So for me, the issue is start with ourselves. Am I these things? Am I genuine myself? Am I aware of who I am? Am I um, doing things in a fair-minded way to my family, to my colleagues in the office? And only then when I myself are transparently and fair-mindedness dealing with myself and being in control and around the people I work with, then can I say I want to go out into the leadership? Because I truly believe, as we've discussed here before, is leadership starts with yourself. Everybody's a leader of themselves, of their little area that they've been given to manage or to work or to delve in, of your family, of your own destiny, of your career. And that's what I aspire to, and that's what I would like to be. So I think the question is even for our viewers, as we talk about others, we talk about our leaders, and we cringe when we see the things that we, we do, let's start with ourselves, and then we can actually be able to take others to task. So I, I think that's my definition of authenticity. In everything that I do, I dress, I think, I am in my relationships with people. It is hard. It takes courage, <laughs> you know, to be that. But certainly, it's, it's a great journey. Thank you.
All right, great. Mary Mukinde, I'm very impressed. I didn't even have to use the red card or the bell. <laughs> I'll get you off the podium, but yes, very good points put across. Yeah. We shall be going over to Professor David Ngoruya. You can make your way to the podium now. But even as uh, Mary has uh, stated, you've touched on something that actually has been top of mind in Nairobi County fracas during the ouster of the speaker and, of course, the recent death of Sharon Utieno that is uh, uh, somehow connected to a leader of this country. And it is interesting to actually put it in that way. Charity begins at home. That authenticity starts with an individual. So are we doing that in our small corners of the world? Well, now let's hear Professor Davis, David Ngaroye's submission now. As rem Remember the rules and regulations? Your time starts now. I love your question, Gladys, and in fact, it reminds me of the Bible times when people asked, can anything good come out of Nazareth mm -hmm. in regard to Jesus? <laughs> and I think the question you are raising is, can anything good come from Kenya mm. in the form of an authentic leader? And I want to say yes. Not in perfect form, but yes, we do have many authentic leaders. I'll mention two, but I'll focus on uh, one. Let me begin uh, by his story. This man has this nation in his heart. This man has no favorites. He gets his job done. This man has direction. He knows where we need to go. And this man has passion. And I'm sure you're thinking, who is this? Yeah. Well, I'll come to him, and I'll tell you who he is. Um, if I look at the life of uh, Dr. Fred Matian, I see the life of a man with a purpose, in a Kenyan I'm very proud about. Because when I listen to what he says, and I look at what he does, and I look at our national good, I see a man with a purpose to make this country better and to leave it better than he found it. Secondly, I see a man of values. And these are religious and professional values. And many people find it difficult to actually marry their religious value with their professional ones. I don't know him perfectly, but mm -hmm. I have seen him being able to actually blend the two so well. And that makes me proud as a Kenyan. I know he's not perfect, no one is. But I see him having strong values. The third thing is trusting relationships. You know, you talk to our young people, and they are passionate about Dr. Fred Martin. You talk to, um, uh, you know, young people on campuses, and they will tell you, oh my goodness, uh, that man is my hero, because he has paved the way for me, and he thinks about me. Um, just consider what he did when he was in the Ministry of uh, Education. All right, Gladys. Um, <laughs> I'll come to the fourth one, self-discipline. I don't need to talk much about that. Um, he has self-discipline. He's able to restrain himself, but at the same time, he's able to be firm and do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And lastly, does he have passion? Yes. He is full of passion. How? He believes in what he does. Um, that, for me... Uh, is what I would say is a man of authentic leadership. I wish we had time to look at another one, mm -hmm. uh, Bishop uh, Oscar Moreu of Nairobi Chapel, and I will tell you more about authentic leaders that we do have in this country. But for now, let me conclude. Yes, does anything good, can anything good come out of this country in terms of authentic leadership? And I'm saying yes. We have a long way to go, but we do have some wonderful examples. Oh, 
All right. I guess this is the part we say amen. <laughs> there definitely <laughs> there is hope in the land. That is a submission by Professor David Ngaroya. He has touched on a man that he believes is actually an authentic leader right here at home, Dr. Fred Matiangi, who is the CS for Interior. And he has said he's a man with a purpose, a man of values, a man who has formed trusting relationships, has not met these people, but people speak highly of him. He has self-discipline. He is restrained, but still still at the end of the day he does the right thing no matter the circumstances and of course as he put it uh, very passionately himself this man is also considered according to him a passionate man in what he does and who he is well again we are asking who is an authentic leader who do you think adorns the qualities of an authentic leader in this country again at gladys underscore gashanja at ntv kenya that sms 20686 would like to hear from you before now we take a short break right here on am live remember the theme is leadership forum that subject authentic leadership we shall continue on the same right after this Good morning. Thank you for staying with AM Live. My name is Gladys Gashanja. The conversation on the Leadership Forum today is authentic leadership. And we are trying to find out, do we have authentic leaders right here in the country? Of course, we've spoken of the late Kofi Annan as one who actually was considered an authentic leader. And we've had submissions from our panelists today. Mary Mokin, dear Executive Leadership Coach and CEO of CDI Africa. Professor David Ngaroya, Director of PLD in Theological Studies studies at the International International Leadership University. They've spoken of the people they think are actually or adorn qualities of authentic leaders. But we are still trying to get from you, <coughs> excuse me, as to who you think actually adorns those qualities of an authentic leader. Just to touch on some of those qualities, somebody who demonstrates behaviors which enable you to trust them in, in them all the time, take ownership when they make a mistake and share responsibility for any mistake and show the necessary courage to push further up the leadership chain to question current status quo or defend their people or processes so do you know anyone who adorns those qualities speak to us at gladys underscore gashanja at ntv kenya that sms 20686 we shall be reading out some of your comments now on the podium we have thomas mundia director executive coaching strathmore business school who is an authentic leader to you and do we have one in kenya Thank you very much and uh, good morning to all the viewers watching us from whichever part of this lovely country of ours. Um, I think this is an interesting debate, especially when you ask it and put the spot on whether we have them here in, in this country and following on my previous speaker's sentiments. I do have also people I think in Kenya stand out as authentic leaders. Now before I, I name them, I'd like to just make a disclaimer so that uh, in this discussion it's very easy in our definition of leadership to leave out the people that really matter a lot. You know, many times we, we've put the limelight of leadership on people that appear on our screens, people that are on our podiums, or people that hold positions, or have titles. Yet we forget many times those everyday Kenyans who are now walking from industrial area, from Kibera, seeking that elusive shilling to just feed their family under the weight of the fuel prices and all the challenges that come with the economy. We forget those parents uh, that every day sacrifice so much in this country, watching them take their children every morning, pick it through traffic and dropping them back at home. Now, these for me are the leaders that we need to celebrate as a country. And so even before we, we, we define and say, who are, do we really have authentic leaders first? I must say we do have them. There are many of them, many silent heroes, even in our public sector. Men and women who sit in our parliament, in our senate, uh, governors who might not be in the limelight. Because unfortunately, it's the bird that always seems to come out on our screens. And we do have them seated in public servants. We know many distinguished and heroic individuals who, despite very meager resources and salaries, every day attempt to do something good and serve. I have been served amazingly. There are times I've gone to renew a, a passport. Uh, and I've met an amazing Kenyan at the end of that teller who, who is not even interested in asking for anything. I recently went to sort out my mother's land issue in, in, in Thika, and I met a public servant that took me through the entire process without even asking for a cent. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the leaders we need to celebrate.
Mm-hmm. Now, let me describe what I, in my opinion, feel is authentic leadership. And I think I share what most of people have shared. One, I think authenticity always refers to consistency. That what you say and what you do are consistent. And you know that comes from being very grounded. It comes from you having very strong, anchored on values, on virtues. I think as what Mary, Mary mentioned. I mean character. Because leadership is about character. It's not about titles. It's not about positions. Leadership is about seeking the well-being of others. Doing that which makes others, other people best. So when you want to ask ourselves whether Kenya has been treated to leaders, you need to ask yourself, are Kenyans better today than in the past? That is the question we need to ask ourselves. And because maybe we have managers that we have entrusted in positions, not leaders. Because leaders have an ability to create a vision, to drive people to something higher, a greater purpose, to connect every individual, whether they, regardless of their tribe, their religion, to something big, something amazing. And unfortunately, we, what we see on the screen has not been that. And so we have to note that we've seen more of self-centeredness and a little bit more of just thinking of their positions as an opportunity for them to amass wealth for, for themselves, which is unfortunate, but it's not all of them. A, an authentic leader has to be vulnerable. An authentic leader has to be willing to admit they have mistakes. We are yet to see in this culture, in this country of ours, people that resign uh, once they have any indication of, of anything, of any wrongdoing. I, I'm waiting for that day, Kenyans. <laughs> that is the day I will start celebrating. But I challenge the people we know right now, who we've seen on the screen, We've mentioned issues regarding whether it's unfortunate and Sharon and condolences to our family, uh, whether it's the incidences we are seeing in, in City Hall, whether it's the people who've embezzled, what are all these cases of mercury, sugar? I mean, where are the men and women coming up and saying, you know what, I have been entrusted with a, a steward of public trust. And therefore, since I have failed, I resign. And that's what leaders, authentic leaders are. They're vulnerable. They admit their mistakes. They, have, they are truthful. They know who they are. Mm-hmm. And they are not ashamed of it. And that's why I celebrate Kofi Annan, as I said earlier. He's an introvert, but one who's not been afraid to say it. Mm-hmm. L- lastly, they also genuinely are concerned about others. Authentic leaders have a genuine desire to make people better than they found them. Now, as you've been waiting and as I release to you my results now, I have those people who I think, as Kenyans, I celebrate them. First, Churchill, wherever you are, I'm your big fan. <laughs> Uh, Churchill, I I know what you've gone through. You have been authentic. You have been faithful to your characteristic, your personality. You have influenced so many young people today. Mm -hmm. You bring laughter to our homes. That is what I call leadership. You 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 can see genuinely he has no interest for himself but for others. Uh, uh, Mohammed uh, Ali, wherever you are, Jichopevu. I, you're one person I still always remember, and I, I celebrate your, your consistency. And not forgetting Dr. Patrick Joroge, our governor, CBK. There is hope. There are men and women out there that are actually authentic. Thank you very much, viewers. Thank you. That is Thomas Mundia, Director Executive Coaching Strathmore Business School, touching on uh, various uh, qualities that he thinks make an authentic leader. Now, as we prepare for Dr. Oliver Kisaka to take the podium, uh, Thomas has touched on the fact that uh, leadership is not always loud. And I like the way you put it across. And of course, I think Anan is the best example for that. He got the job done, but he did not shout. He just got it done. He knew what needed to be done. But of course, touched on the fact that a, an authentic leader is concerned consistent. It's his character that actually speaks on his or her behalf. And maybe the question we should be asking ourselves as a country is if we are in a better place than we were some time back, did we entrust our country to managers versus leaders? That's a very good question. And uh, again, a leader, an authentic leader needs to be vulnerable. We have not seen those resignations. We've not seen people come out and say, I am sorry, I made this mistake, I'm going to own up for it. They should be truthful. Of course, the answer is always, it wasn't me. And uh, are they genuine? A lot of questions coming across and wondering if we are actually uh, bringing up the right leadership. So again, we cross over to Dr. Oliver Kisaka, MD Corat, Africa, an organization that builds the capacities of church leaders. Dr. Tari, do we have authentic leaders? Are we actually on the right path in making such in this country? I thank you, Gladys. And um, I would like to appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak and dialogue with Kenyans on a morning like this. I want to thank God for my fellow uh, panelists this morning and the things that they have shared, um, which I agree with. 
I think one of the things that has come out so far is to say that there is a dialogue or a discourse between whether leadership is position or whether it is uh, capacity to influence. And I come from the school of thought that evaluates leadership in terms of capacity to influence. There are very many people that do not have a position, but who are daily uh, creating uh, what's positive for Kenya. If I would say myself that as Africans and as Kenyans, there are many weaknesses we have. And I think um, what uh, my, my fellow panelist Mundia has said, it would be good to try and bring out the positive sides sometimes. Mm. I know that the cardinal definition of what is newsworthy is not what is good. <laughs> but, but I think there needs to be some effort <laughs> towards so that we, we begin to create role models that, that provide a different narrative. Mm -hmm. um, there are more than 60% of marriages in this country that work and work very well, mm -hmm. that are hardly talked about. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to highlight uh, one leader that I think uh, really fits the bill, and this is Professor Kibuda Kibwana. And I want to quickly say a number of things. First, he has clear vision of where the people ought to be going for, their, for the better. He was involved in the, in the forces, the civil society uh, organization that championed a new era in Kenya. He became governor of Makweni, and now all governors are traveling to see. Mm. Secondly, has character. Professor Kibwana almost lost his governorship in his first governor, I mean, uh, uh, term. term, his first mm. term. Mm. But you remember he was willing to lose it? He was willing to lose it. He was standing against a group of MCS that had no concept of leadership at all. And when they failed, then they were disciplined by the people. And in just two years, he has turned the county around. Thirdly, um, and I would have said he has faith and character. Professor Kibuna is a man of faith. He, he completely impressed me when he went to theological school after his professorship to study theology to understand what faith is. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's amazing. Thirdly, a, a, an authentic leader is secure. And Professor Kibuda Kibwana is secure. What I, do I mean by security? You're not afraid of people who have talent, who have competence in some areas better than yourselves. You can still bring them to your team and work with them. Fourthly, he has integrity. He didn't have to buy a big car without the money, with money that he did not have. Mm. <laughs> he's, he's willing to go to work if nece necessary to get the job done. Mm -hmm. Fifth, he works for the common good. And today, Makweni is celebrated, particularly the fact that he's the first county that has a health insurance card for every citizen of McQueen. And lastly, is a leader who can be called an example. If you, are, if you want to define authentic leadership, look at Professor. I say this all to appreciate God for giving us such people. And to come back to Kenyans and say, the fact that we fail doesn't mean all is lost. I think sometimes we, we err. I am a teacher by profession. Teachers do not tell students, useless. <laughs> they don't, teachers do not tell students, good for nothing. Teachers do, do not tell students, can never make it. If you check the report cards of students, you see, can do better. Pull up your socks. Mm. Try next time. And I think Africa is at that position where we need to be healed from the trauma of colonialism and negative self-perception and to begin thinking that we have potential which needs to be developed. And leaders are developed as much as they are born. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Oliver Kisaka, for your submission. Opposition versus capacity to influence. Is that the kind of leadership we have in this country? Very well put. The person he says epitomizes authentic leadership for him in this country is Professor Kibutha Kibwana. He is the governor of Makwe, and he says he has actually brought to life what devolution was supposed to be in the first place. He is a man of faith and character, a man who has courage, as you remember, he survived 
he survived impeachment in his first term in office and it was very ugly there for a while but the second term he has come out to show that he actually has what it takes to be a governor he is secure he is ready to share his vision we've been seeing a lot of governors flocking to Makweni County to find out what it is that they can learn from this leader he's got integrity he has not lived beyond his means we've not had anything on the side about him misusing the resources at his disposal and of course he is doing and putting his leadership out for the common good we're talking about their health insurance we've also seen other projects that he's put across that will actually help the people of makwini to live better lives well lady and gentlemen thank you for your submissions and i think let's now just put more weight on some of the issues that you brought forth and i'll start with you mary you touched on how you were very concerned in as far as how maybe the Nairobi County politics is being handled and just looking at how that is being handled, whether on the MC side, whether on the speaker who they want to impeach is concerned, just as general, what about it is actually diluting the authenticity of leadership? As we were talking about, you know, being authentic and uh, the virtues or the virtues that really underpin authenticity is, you know, being fair mindedness. The wisdom of listening to both parties and actually listening, active listening, is such a key part of authenticism, it's a key part of leadership. If you can't listen, how are you going to get a balanced view to be able to, you know, judge and go forth on any subject? If, you, if, you, if you're not transparent, if you're not genuine. So for me, just seeing the kind of rawness I just don't think it's any sign of any leadership at all, let alone authenticism. But just the whole situation of throwing chairs, being physical, there's no way that you can tell me that these people have <coughs> fortitude, that they are, you know, their temperament, they're self-controlled, mm -hmm. there was no se sense of self-awareness. If this is what a leader does, then what would the children do? Mm -hmm. What is happening in the schools, if this is what they see, in the newspapers that that is the way to solve a problem you know for mm. me it, it's it was just out of sync of what actual natural leadership or an authentic leadership to be and mm. sometimes just to touch a little bit and i hope we have time to do it on what dr kisaka said about us you know about that method of what teachers do to to be able to encourage people i think the media and i'd like to tackle nation sometimes mm. you know we we are part of this thing of of highlighting the negatives and mm. highlighting the things and saying how authentic leadership is nation group and not just you, all the media portraying. Where is the balance sometimes to create people to feel positive about themselves? Because it is not as bad, it's true, as we view it. And how could we bring some of the lessons so that people are seeing a contrast? All we see is all this negativism. And then it makes everybody despondent. It makes us afraid. Because this is what we're confronted with day out on television, on newspapers, that sometimes most, some of us have stopped reading them, stopped buying them, because it's, it just kind of envelops you and makes you depressed. Okay, mm. point noted. And now, Professor Ngaroya, just to mm -hmm. touch on maybe still on the Nairobi County politics, and uh, there has been talk of either side clinging on to what it is my job description comes with. I want to own this. I want a bit of this. I want to have more trips. I want to take the, uh, the um, what is it called, the fast class as opposed to economy. I mean, the, the politics has turned into something that it has nothing to do with leadership to start with. Your comments? Yes, because leadership also has to do with sacrifice. Um, a good leader will look at a situation um, they can see the pack that they have and they can say no to their privileges and they can say no that although they, ha they have certain entitlements for the good of others, I am not going to touch that pack. And that is what I see lacking. Uh, the, the issue of knowing that uh, if you are a leader, then you sacrifice for the common good. What would it be like in this country? If every one of our leaders were to say, I am sacrificing one month of my entire pay package for the good of Nairobi County, we would have a lot. Uh, first of all, we would have better 
and cleaner toilets around the city. Mm -hmm. um, we would have more people having jobs because there is going to be some kind of financial empowerment that, you know, that, that would re we would have a pool that can really um, uh, empower the people, especially the young people. We would have better health care in the county. And so I, I think for me, if you're talking about leadership and uh, all we are hearing is entitlement that can be defended legally, then I'm not seeing authentic leadership. Authentic leadership carries the element of self-sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And that is not, uh, I'm not seeing that in the current uh, scenario that uh, Mary described so well. Okay, now Thomas, to you, you mentioned and you insist that there are a lot of uncelebrated heroes out there. I mean, and maybe to just put this banner in the works in as far as what the media does, much of that is not put out for people to understand. There is more to it than just the negative we see on air. I guess the question here would be, is there also the idea of, uh, you know, w welfare, wellness and just you know people being rich versus having the right values because you will see the people we bring to you probably bring some sort of clout and they have the podium to actually be celebrated as opposed to those uncelebrated heroes who probably would not you know hold water so to speak well i think there's there's, there's truth in that and i think it brings me to the i think we need to have a radical surgery in this country and divorce politics from economics and I think that might be the beginning of us uh, di bringing a different debate into these things. Because given what my panelists have very well articulated, is that when most people associate uh, a leadership or a position in public mm. with economic well-being. Mm. But the minute we divorce that and, and we start raising the, the profile that these positions are positions of stewardship. And that... Uh, and that also needs to be the message brought about to the people who are owners also of the media houses. Mm. That they themselves also ex exemplify those characteristics and deliberately. Because remember the key word here is deliberate. Mm. I mean, we've got to understand that there's also the commercial aspect of wanting to present these people in front. But at what cost? And I think my, co my colleagues have raised that. Mm -hmm. What effect is that having in the kind of role models who are then presenting to our young people out there? And, and so I think we need to have a very sober discussion as Kenyans and, and de link the two. And when a person enters into a position, it's not our time to eat. Mm, which uh, is what we've been saying. But it's our time to serve. I wish we can have that. <laughs> and a book probably written that way. Yeah, very well said. Now, uh, Dr. Tari, I think you touched on the fact that uh, Professor Kivutha Kibwane epitomizes the fact that he was secure with what or who he is and to a point where even when faced with impeachment, he was ready to let it go. That is not something we see a lot of. And it, it brings us back to what's happening in the County Assembly of Nairobi right now. How exactly should leaders see these challenges that come their way? How should they deal with such situations as opposed to pepper spraying and throwing chairs at each other? I think, Gladys, the problem, part of our problem is that we are dealing in a system called a democracy. Uh, Aristotle said democracy is the worst of the six possible systems, but it's the most popular. <laughs> the people who get elected in democracy are not the good ones. They are the popular ones. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. And so... The, the people you are seeing in, uh, in that MCA group are the ones who have contributed to their own popularity through various means. Mm -hmm. And you know in Kenya what that means? You have taken a lot of money from somewhere that did not belong to you. You have dished it around to people in difficult circumstances. Mm -hmm. You have influenced their capacity to, I mean, their willingness to vote in that moment of queuing on that particular day, and you have ended up in this position. And so you have got, you are attempting to recover what you lost in, in that period of campaign. I think what we need to face ourselves and say is that we have fought with colonialism enough. We now need to be honest with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And by that I mean, 
the question of civilization. What does it mean to be civilized? <laughs> to be civilized is not just to be independent. It is to be independent and to be able to manage your independence for the common good. So we are happy we are independent, but we are uncivilized because we are not able to manage our independence for the common good. Mm -hmm. uh, when God was preparing Israel for Canaan, he allowed them 400 years of, of, of slavery, and in the wilderness fed them on manna, which they were allowed to pick enough for themselves for that day. Now there were some Kenyans there who would pick uh, for many days. You know, there's this habit of what about next year, today? When you take what you think is yours for next year today, you're actually not taking what is just out there. It belongs to somebody else today. And that's what corruption is about. Mm -hmm. We live by fear. We fear tomorrow. I'm an MCA now. Four years from now, I'm not sure I'll be re-elected. What will I do when I'm not re-elected? So you steal everything you need mm. in order to be secure. I think we need to heal ourselves on that and say that I should be a leader who organizes society in such a way that when I am not an MCA, I can live at the end of Kibera and still have the water and the electricity and the good roads and everything I need to go about life. Which also speaks to transitional leadership, I think, to a very large extent. Now, Mary, there's something else you touched on and I think is very important. And it also uh, focuses on what part of authentic leadership is about, which is being true to yourself. And uh, this calls on one to draw on their values, their beliefs, their principles and their morals. Now, those seem to be some things that have actually been let go in terms of leadership in this country in different forms. And I'm speaking on the that conversation to do with the death of Sharon Utino. Now, a lot is in, enshrined in that whole uh, incident. And maybe just uh, from your point of view, what do you think is a glaring factor when it comes to leadership or the lack of it? I think honestly it's back to what we've discussed before and it's been brought up by some of my panelists. It's you know this issue of values and what I don't know whether in the transition from our African cultural context as we were leapfrogging to the Western world and the values that we've then absorbed very quickly and we've had this dash between 40 years, we're supposed to be something else. We have aped, as Dr. Saka was saying, the things that people think are important. Mm. And it seems to be pride. You know, these things of pride and yourself. Yeah. You become the all. You know, you, the person has become the biggest thing and therefore it goes into sex, it, you know, uh, corruption, which is alcohol mm -hmm. and uh, money. Those are the things that seem to bolster us, you know, that. And to me, there's that whole collapse of marriage. But we have it elsewhere. But the things that people value. I remember somebody showed me, in fact, it's one of your young people here, uh, one of your business daily uh, reporters. She showed me a video on BBC of a young lady who was being interviewed very well on sponsors. And her m role models was some of these ladies that, you know what I'm talking about, the uh, slay queens or these ladies uh -huh. who are always taking selfies. Mm -hmm. That was her role model. This is a university student who has, and she says she has two sponsors, and they give her money. And they showed her whole home situation where she lives from. And I was shocked that these are the values that we promoted. It's all about money. It's all about the self. But there's a whole core of others who are not. And that's where I think that the media and the fourth estate could play such a big role also, not just in reporting, but also reporting others so that there's always a comparison and things for people to aspire to. You used to do, I think it was Nation, you used to do a very good poll analysis of governors, who has done what, when they first, the first term, and you were ranking the governors and the best in the policies that they advance. There was a time you used to do it also of MPs, those who have spoken the most, those who have not spoken at all, and then you say who've brought the most bills. Those kind of league tables and those kind of just espousing the good that is happening. And even maybe MCAs, who, which are the MCAs that are working best? What policies have they brought? How many bills have they brought? Those kind of things will maybe give prominence, give respect, and allow people to see something else. I love those kind of league tables. And I love the governor ones. Which, which county is paying the most tax? Which county is collecting the most tax? Which county has got the best benefits? Those kind of leagues could start a competition or restart, because you used to do it very well. So that there's something else that is a pillar for what people are seeing. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. which university students are doing well. I don't know, or which, but there's something that's gone wrong. So steer the conversation in the right direction and celebrate the right and things. Celebrate it and celebrate it and allow people to see that those who do well are recognized. Because mm -hmm. what else can you give them? If not money, mm -hmm. then let's give that national problem and that respect mm -hmm. that then people can say, oh, so and so. And then to give an example to others to follow. Okay. Now, Professor Angoria, you touched on the fact that you look up to Dr. Fred Matiangi, the CS for Interior. And one of the things you said about this man who ma that makes him an authentic leader to you is that he's a man of values. Now, when mm -hmm. we go to this case that has to do with the late Sharon Otino and of course it ha is also linked to a leader of that county what does he say as far as what uh, morals and values have uh, to do with leadership authentic leadership um, uh, thank you for uh, that question uh, Gladys <clears throat> uh, to come back to Dr. F uh, Fred Matiangi I don't want to comment much about mm -hmm. Sharon because that's an issue before the yes. court but I recognize it's important enough and we can't you know, just go, uh, you know, around it like that. Uh, but allow me to come back to uh, Dr. Fred Matiangi. One of the uh, things that uh, really makes me hold him in high esteem is this fact. He desires that young people would have honesty. And you saw it. Um, you, you saw it when he began to actually uncover what was going on regarding cheating in examinations. Mm -hmm. And what was he doing? We may have thought that he was just simply saying, you guys, you need to begin working hard and diligently and, uh, you know, accept, accept your grade for what it is. He was doing a lot more than that. To me, he was thinking about the next generation. You know, if we are raising men and women now who don't have a value system, uh, who don't have any, 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 anywhere to hold on, all they are going to do is to make our country worse. And you know, it's not going to be worse for one person. It's going to be worse for all of us. And so authentic leaders think beyond now. Yes, we have real problems. We have real issues right now, and we need to address them. But we need to take a long-term view. Mm -hmm. And the long-term view is... How can we remain stable in our morals, mm. in discipline, so that the next generation has a solid foundation on which they can build our country? Okay. That is what we are lacking. And so um, the fact that Dr. Fred Matiangi thinks about the long term, uh, for me, is wonderful for this country and I wish we had more men and uh, more women um, thinking like that because when we do then we know the upcoming generations we have something to hold on and they will even want to do better and that is only one character honestly and tell me um, which parent does not want their son or daughter to be honest mm. what company does not want their employees to be honest what government does not want to be their people to be honest mm. what trade partners do not want their other partners to be honest uh, so authentic leadership uh, thinks about the next generation on the issue of values but of course values do not exist by themselves there is an issue of discipline mm -hmm. in executing uh, those those, those values. Now to come back to the issue that you raised, you know, uh, uh, around uh, Sharon, I think for me um, is to say that there's a lot that we can learn from this. Um, leadership has failure. Even authentic leaders fail. And the issue becomes when leaders have stood with us and they have failed, what do we do with them? Do we discard them or do we restore them? Mm. And I think if leaders are willing to be restored, um, that is human. If they are not willing to be restored, it's a very different matter. Um, you know, it means that they stand for their own selfish uh, ends. Okay, now let me bring Thomas into this conversation. <laughs> and uh, well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let me bring uh, uh, Thomas to this conversation. I mean, I hear 
Uh, Ngoriga is saying that an authentic leader has room to make mistakes. And we said one of the characteristics is that they know they can make mistakes and the beauty of it is that they own up to them. Now, we have our scenario here of Sharon and of course with a leader that is involved in this. But let's take it a notch higher to the United States. We had the issue with Bill Clinton, the former US president. But for some reason, the Americans actually forgave him and they moved on and to date they still celebrate him as a leader they'll always remember so what is it about him and what happened and just that whole scenario that speaks to the conversation authentic leadership oh, Gladys, that's, uh, <laughs> i was fearing that's what you fear times you hope it lands with the next panelist <laughs> But it's an interesting question, and I think one of the things it underlines is that this whole thing of the challenges we see with ethics is, is not just peculiar to Africa. And I think it reiterates the fact that it's a human problem. And I think the, the, the minute we, and I, I, I love what Kisaka mentioned earlier, that we need to be proud as Africans, mm -hmm. that um, even in our shortfalls, we've seen worse. We've seen Enron scandals in the 1980s. I mean, we're not, we're not the only ones that are peculiar with it, but what's the difference? Mm -hmm is that I think, first and foremost, we, we've got to appreciate that maybe the, mag the magnitude of this situation we're describing here, and as I said, I follow what Professor said, it's at court, and it's very hard to put a lot of comments to it, mm -hmm. but I think the magnitude of this issue we are dealing with, my fellow panelists, is the fact that there's a murder case, and I think the fact that there's killing has, gives it gravity. And because you're now going to the very sanctity of life, mm -hmm. you know, we're not talking about... Two lives. Uh, okay, two lives, in this mm -hmm. case. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think that gives it gravity. And, and even when you're looking at evaluating an, an issue, every time we look at news, we make a judgment of whether an action is right or wrong. But we have a compass. We have a lens we use and a criteria we use. And one of the common things to use when you're measuring this, and I'm going back to my good friend, who seems to be very much aligned to Greek philosophers, <laughs> who I also like very much. And they used to give us a criteria of how you, you judge an action is morally right or wrong. It has to meet three conditions. The act itself has to be intrinsically evil. Secondly, the intention. You look at the intention and lastly, you look at the circumstance or the consequences. And therefore, that's how, what measures the difference between the Clinton case mm. and what we're looking at here. Mm. What is the act? In this case, we're talking about intrinsically evil act, which is murder. What is the intention? Well, the intention is normally de decided by the court and that's why we leave it. They will decide mm. because intention resides in the person. You can't tell it, obviously. Yeah. But what is the consequence? What are the circumstances we're looking at? Is we look at the gravity. We're looking at an innocent life. We're looking at the, the in, uh, brutal murder of a, an innocent baby. Mm. That gives it gravity. And I think that's what we need to distinguish. But also a disclaimer that we don't also move away from excusing actions only purely mm. from the fact that this is murder, mm. therefore this other one was just stealing over a few shillings in the office, we exonerate them. I mean, we have to be very clear. An act when it's carried out will be an act that is wrong. Mm. It is now that we look at the consequences and then judge it according to the impact of the consequences of whatever action is. And that determines the difference between a Clinton case mm -hmm. and what we're looking at with the Sharon case. Okay. But that's a hard one, Gladys. <laughs> All right, but we had to talk about it. It yeah. has been yeah. actually doing the rounds wondering why one takes more weight over the other. Now, Dr. Kisaka, as Professor has put it rightly, authentic leaders also fail. Are we saying having leaders that do not accept mistakes, that do not come out and say, I made a mistake and I'd like to correct it, a reflection of the, the society that we are, where we put them on a, such a high pedestal and do not expect them to ever drop the ball? Yes, I think we have created uh, an unrealistic culture. Um, as I said a while ago, we ought to look at one another as... Um, as the works in the making. Mm. Each one of us, professionally, morally, age-wise, we are all going through a process of growth. Now that process will of necessity make it uh, the case that people go wrong, that people make mistakes. There are some that uh, you could say are deliberately done uh, and people know they are wrong uh, and they do it. Part of the challenge is that uh, the, the interface between what's personal and what's societal hasn't been very well coordinated. Because when it comes to society, we set for ourselves, for example, a new constitution, uh, a legal system, 
that is supposed to be applied uh, without discrimination to everybody. So when somebody goes wrong, depending on the magnitude of what has been done and how it is defined in law, the law ought to be applied uh, equally. And so, for example, I would speak about the Clinton versus uh, Obado case and say, if you check the way the U.S. does things, not because they are a perfect society, they are just a little more advanced than we are, mm -hmm. is that the law applies to everybody. You can go to jail whether you are a Clinton or whether you are a common man. Mm -hmm. I think that ought to happen in Kenya if something is properly defined. And that law also then defines uh, what happens when a president in office does this and uh, if they own up to it, then what is the outcome? And again, they have defined that, and we ought to define that here. And I think we did by uh, the, 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 the moral values that we put in the Constitution for ourselves. Mm -hmm. The threshold of which would have actually said that this case, uh, somebody ought not to hold public office at, at that level. And so I think we, we ought to think a lot about how we reorganize our culture. We need to re-engineer our society, have different value systems, uh, put security in things that matter rather than things that don't. As, now, as it is now, security is in money mm. right now. Yeah. So uh, you, you get positions, you stick with positions, you fight for places according to the access you have to, to money. If, if it has no money, nobody's interested. Mm -hmm. Why are the MPs, I mean, the MCS of Nairobi trying to throw out uh, the speaker? Mm -hmm. It's because she was unwilling to sign in that they go to Mombasa. <laughs> I mean, so selfish. So all we are saying is that we need to, to change that. What is, what is valuable? Mm -hmm. I think we need to come to the point where character is much more valuable than money. Yeah. Well said. Now, before we continue with this conversation, I hear we have somebody who would like to chime into this conversation. Simon from Bungoma, he is on the line. Simon, if you can hear me, what is your contribution? Good morning, Gladys and the panelists. Good morning. Yes, I am excited about the authentic, authentic reader, and I will say that in Kenya, the authentic reader is not there as yet. Why? Because uh, these uh, uh, qualities, one, the authentic, authentic leader, leader to be a person of integrity, morality, is, who is visionary, selfless, selfless. And the selfless person is one who doesn't fear even to die. So long as they are issue, they want to push the, the good, with the welfare of the nation, they want to push his moving so they don't fear. And then this personal morality is in terms of personal morality in private life and also in public life. And unfortunately, most of our leaders, the ones we call leaders, they don't have morality because we have so many issues, scandals, private and public. So an authentic leader is one who is selfless, who is willing mm -hmm. to die for the sake of the people. Just the same way a parent uh, goes very long way for the sake of the family. And the Gladys, as I conclude, allow me mm -hmm. to nominate uh, Dr. Kishaka as an authentic leader <laughs> because he has been true and consistent for the last 20-something, uh, about 30 years I've known him. Dr. Kishaka, this is Simon Otero. We have worked with you. In the past. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Simon. I think at this point we yeah. need to clap for Dr. Kisaka. <laughs> well done. And I think he's touched, Simon has touched on some of the things we've talked about and just uh, magnified on some of them. And uh, just to go on Twitter, there's uh, Sarova who's saying an authentic leader builds trust and uh, generates uh, enthusiastic support from their subordinates. An authentic leader is able to improve individual and team performance. Another, Abdallah Mdambo, says being authentic isn't about finding your true self is about finding your true self who am i it's about rather it's about find is not about finding your true self who am i it's about finding your aspirational self who do i want to be interesting angle now authentic leadership is also paying attention to the claims you made about yourself and then striving to become that person a very nice and interesting twist to this conversation and i think it's what uh, dr kisaka was touching on being true and also simon being true to yourself whether or not the eyes are on you mary 
authenticity. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And I, I sort of agree in, in some sense with the last comment that also your aspirational self, because you see, when you're self-aware, you think about what I'm saying, mm. what is this going to cause, you know. It's not just being, I'm genuine, you know. Uh, you know, I would just want to be myself, whatever yeah. comes mm. out. No, you're, you're self-aware, you're thinking about it. What will this do for the other person? Mm. You're selfless, you know, how can this, the issue brought about a vision? So you're very deliberate and intentional on what you're doing. And therefore, it is that you're always aspiring and building yourself constantly. Mm -hmm. You know, being yourself doesn't mean I'll uh, just, you know, whatever. That's how I feel, that's how I'll talk, no. Yeah. It's thinking about it and what it, what it does to the other person, whether it promotes fair-mindedness, whether it promotes genuineness in that situation, whether it's fair practice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, Professor, Thomas had touched on the fact that for him, an authentic leader is one that is consistent. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody is asking, is it even possible for politicians to be authentic, considering they're never consistent in the fact that when they want something, they morph into something, and when they are done with you, they morph back to something. And he's actually, this person is touching on the fact that right now we're dealing with this fuel tax that when they were actually campaigning they said they were looking out for the welfare of the common one ng but now we're dealing with a bill that is doing the back and forth between state house and parliament and the one ng is wondering what happened to the promises you made to me professor <laughs> well I must say that, you know, politicians have many lives. <laughs> and um, I think they keep asking two important questions. Uh, what is good for me? And uh, what is good for my people, for me to remain where I am? And I think they have a very difficult time when they keep asking that. You see, leadership, even politics, ought to be anchored on values. Uh, so that as we make a decision and as we discuss an issue, then we know that we are anchored on values. And values don't change with circumstances. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem that we have. Uh, you see, if leadership is not about sacrifice for the good of others, then it means that we are forgetting what it is mm -hmm. and uh, one of the key things and that's why i believe that our country is really a great country you look at our constitution mm -hmm. and the issue of holding public office um, you know matters of leadership and integrity it is so clear and you ask yourself we know these things we've written them down we have they are so loud and clear and yet our actions and what we say are so different and you come back to that problem the problem of not being anchored on values. And so, uh, but at the same time, I wish to differ a little bit. I, I, I think sometimes we characterize uh, politicians as changing their views all the time. Mm -hmm. Not all politicians. In fact, when you talk to them, uh, when you talk to some of them, they have a heart for people. But the problem is, uh, sometimes we may use bad means mm -hmm. so that we may have the end that we want and again it's a failure of being anchored on values mm. and so if we want to talk about politics i think we need to talk about if, we, if they ought to be on anchored on values and what are those values they are so well enshrined in, in our constitution. constitution i think that is the question we should ask why is it then people fear to do the right thing that's a good question. Now, Thomas, I think this feeds on to the question I was going to bring to you. Link between the authentic leader and the legacy, because I think there's a disconnect. And uh, as you were saying, most leaders have lost uh, sight of the legacy they leave behind. Yeah. And I think uh, that's a very good point, Gladys. I think I'm following on also what Kisaka in his submission presented, that authenticity or leadership in its very essence has to look at the well-being of others, and that which you leave. I like the example he gave of the MCA that can comfortably leave office and go to Kibera and have access to water because mm. they can sleep well. You know, there's nothing as beautiful as being authentic and true. It means even when a phone rings, you're not worried which number is this from. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You sleep well knowing mm. that when I had that position, mm -hmm. I, I did my very best and uh, there's no one who's going to follow me. There are people today in, in this Kenya cannot walk around safely. Mm -hmm. They cannot sit in any restaurant comfortably. Why? Because of the failure to being authentic. Mm -hmm. Now, the beauty of being authentic is that 
because of the very fact that you've influenced people to be better than you find them, is that a mark you'll always leave is that you'll find generations that come are always better. You think about it, Gladys. Who are the leaders? When we think about leaders, who are the people that come to mind? Mm -hmm. We throw names like Mahatma Gandhi, Mother Teresa, Mandela, Kofi Annan. Why? If you notice the common denominator with each of them is a selfless, selflessness mm -hmm. with a desire to leave a world better for the people that they come. Mm -hmm. And so there's always a link between authenticity and legacy. Mm -hmm. If our leaders that are sitting today in those positions, the people we've given positions of trust, were to be aware that one day they will leave office and, and all those things that they do now will haunt them. Those things don't disappear. You know, people think that you will, you will get away with it. Mm. These things have a way of following up. How many families are we seeing now fighting for wealth that was acquired by these people illegally or illicitly? Mm. A and therefore, we have to ask ourselves, at the end of the day, I might end up a pauper. And maybe we need to borrow a leaf from our Tanzanian brothers across, where we put emphasis on, on, on looking at how we seek the common good, the public good. And that is the legacy we want to leave because we have a generation to consider. Young people who are watching us yeah. who want to emulate certain values. And we as a country have to be careful what we reward. Very important. Mm. Dr. Kisaka, even in closing, because time is far much gone, I mean, we have a situation right here. We're talking about the Finance Bill 2018. The president will be actually addressing it. Uh, he's expected to address it later in the day, the state of the economy and that Finance Bill and what it means and the way forward. What would you tell leaders to keep in mind, even as they deal with this particular issue? Um, at the beginning of my presentation, and I want to thank Nay NTV very much, and yourself, Gladys, my fellow panelists, from whom I have learned a lot this morning. At the beginning of my presentation, I highlighted the name of uh, His Excellency Kibaki. Yes. You remember? Yes. When President Kibaki came into power, Kenya was in a situation like it almost is today. Instead of increasing taxes and borrowing, he actually stopped borrowing and redirected the funding to the people. At that time, coffee farmers had not been paid, maize farmers had not been paid, milk farmers were not being paid, middlemen were ruling the roost. Kibaki painted a vision he said, we are a working nation. Mm. That thing so gripped Kenyans that they walked to work to put the matatus in yeah. order, if you remember. Yes. That thing so gripped Kenyans that they arrested the police. What do I mean by a leader? We are talking about people who can actually create a new vision. When you overtax people, you kill their capacity to invest. Trump has many negatives. The last time I was here, when I just mentioned his name, it drew a reaction. <laughs> he has many negatives. Yes. But what has he done? He has lowered the taxes of the American people. In the last eight months, more than four million jobs have been created. I mean, and today they are looking for people to employ. I'm just saying, let the present government really think about the way of taxation. There is great hunger. And that hunger is stealing the blood, is going for the blood of the average Kenyan. I think what we should be doing is, uh, like Mundia has said, long-term, long-term perception. Mm -hmm. We need to redirect the efforts to say, put more money in the pockets of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Let Kenyans think of investment. That investment is what will create jobs. Widen the tax yes. bracket, the tax base, mm -hmm. And you will you will get the same, same you actually get more than seventy billion. Yeah. When Kibaki came in, tax was at I think one twenty billion. Mm -hmm. In just two years, it had risen to over five hundred billion. This problem of street uh, jams in Nairobi with cars started in Kibaki's time. Mm -hmm. Why? Every industry was making money. Every farmer was making money. People bought cars they didn't know what to do with. You know. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying. Who, we are right now under pressure by IMF. I get offended by that mentality that comes to brood over us and to force us to do things which we ought not to be doing. I think we should be extremely careful about China, in my view. What I hear they are doing with Zambia is not very positive. Yeah. I would advise that the economists that we have, who are very sharp people, Dr. Thuge and the rest, please sit down 
and reorganize this economy. Mm -hmm. This economy has sufficient mm -hmm. for us to pay off China, get free from debt, and get every Kenyan working. Okay, now definitely my time is out, but before I release you, I guess, just a clarion call in under a minute in as far as authentic leadership is concerned and the wellness of his country. Mary. I think for me, more than that, I'll just say what I've gathered and what is sort of synthesizing my thoughts from this session is celebrating, and I think it came from Dr. Oz, um, Kisaka, is about celebrating character. And I would say celebrating and promoting character. Mm -hmm. If we could make that a national, you know, issue, you know, have have national words, have nation sponsor. If we take the characteristics from chapter six and talk about, you know, people mm -hmm. who respect, who bring honor to the nation and dignity, people who promote uh, public confidence, mm -hmm. even the national awards that are given by government, they should be promoting these characteristics. If we focus on that, that perhaps will rally the people. The other thing that I've gotten out of this, and I knew it, but it's come out even more clearly, is about leadership being about service. It's yeah. about service to others. Yeah. If that we promote it more and more, then it will be less about self, and then we'll have people who are genuinely doing work, and that was raised. Professor? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Let me just... Um, In 30 uh, seconds. Yes. Here. Just um, end by, first of all, condoling with the family of Sharon. Mm -hmm. um, as a parent, I can only imagine their pain, and my prayer is that God would give them peace and comfort and strength. But let me also say that in authentic leadership, any purpose, any dreams that is not based on value will not fly. If you are to go anywhere, if you are to accomplish anything as an authentic leader, the value system must always hold. Not for some, but for all. That way, we carry the masses with us. Very well said. Thomas Mundia, your clarion call, 30 um, seconds. Um, always start with the man and woman in the mirror. I always believe that. Before, Kenyans, before we can call the, our leaders to these levels. We need to begin ourselves in our own small ways. And I think I'm calling Kenyans, wherever they are, to start exercising an ability of care of the environment. Small things. I came today and I'm seeing people overlapping. Uh, you see people throwing litter. It's just us first raising our consciousness hmm. of responsibility for our environment. Only then can we start raising and picking a point to the leaders and saying we demand this. But until that, we, they are a reflection of us. Lastly, we have to remember where leaders are made. These people who are embezzling or uh, using up money or killing people have been brought up from homes. Mm. They have gone through an education system. And I think I like what Kisaka said. We need to review as our social reengineering and look at how we are raising our children. And lastly, what is our education sector? What are we celebrating in our education? Mm. When we allow children, people to cheat in exams and they eventually become our ministers and whatever, aren't we recycling the same problem? A thorough, and yet I understand it's a complex situation. We will not resolve it in one minute. But we have begun. Let us be proud of our Kenya. We have a lovely country. Okay. Dr. Kisaka, 30 seconds. Okay. First, I want to look at Kenyans and say to every Kenyan, please fear God. I think we have lost reverence for God in this country. We live as if... Um, God doesn't exist. There's a quote here from a lady called Lance Secretan. Authenticity is the alignment of head, mouth, heart, and feet. Thinking, saying, feeling, and doing the same thing consistently. Mm -hmm. This builds trust and followers love leaders they can trust. Wow. Well said. Again, Mary Mukinde, Executive Leadership Coach and CEO CDI Africa, Professor David Ngaria, Director of PLD in Theological Studies at the International Leadership University, Dr. Oliver Kisaka, MD Corret Africa, Thomas Mundia, Director Executive Coaching Strategy.